Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Katie, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Lindsay and I will be running today's webinar, Flexbooks 101. We're so glad you've joined us and are participating in our CK12 Certified Educator Program. Yes, thank you to everyone who's joined us today. I'm excited to be one of your presenters as we discuss the many ways you can customize CK12 Flexbooks to fit your individual needs. But before we get started with today's content, I'd like to go over a few logistics about the Zoom webinar platform and make sure you guys are comfortable with these windows. So you should see two windows. In the Q&A window, that's where we would like you to post any questions you have that you would like us to answer during today's webinar. Um, sometimes they lead to demonstrations, but they're usually questions that uh, you think would be for the greater good of the community that we can answer. Um, during our, during our presentation today. The chat window, which you guys are already very active in, is the place that we want everybody to post maybe where you're from, the subjects you teach, um, what grade level you teach. Just make sure that in that window, you have moved it from all panelists to say all panelists and attendees so everybody can see what you've posted. So most of you are here as part of the Certified Educator Program. I just want to remind you about a few program links. You can register for any upcoming session at any time at ck12.org slash jumpstart. And you can find information about the requirements of the program, office hours, session assignments, and archived webinars by going to the Certified Educator Program link at the footer of our pages or by going directly to ck12.org slash certified 2017. Okay, before we get started, let's find out a bit more about you and your interest in Flexbooks. You're going to see a poll here in just a few seconds that's going to prompt you to respond to a short question. So this is, this is a pretty easy one, we think. Have you used or customized a CK12 Flexbook? Your options are, I have yet to use a CK12 Flexbook. I use Flexbooks without customizing them. I customize Flexbooks, and then I have built a Flexbook from scratch. So we are gonna wait a few seconds for you guys to lock in your answers. Making good progress here, we'll give you about five more seconds. Okay, we'll go ahead and end our poll and we're gonna show you the results. Uh, I'm not terribly surprised, this is awesome. 67% of you have yet to use CK12 Flexbooks, so that's why you're here today in Flexbooks 101 is to, to learn how to find one, how you might wanna start customizing one. Um, we do have a few veteran people here who have um, used a Flexbook, maybe customized it, and then we have just a user or two who's attempted to build a Flexbook from scratch. So welcome to all of you. So I think with that, we're gonna get started with today's core content. Um, today's session is called Flexbooks 101. And for those of you, as we saw, that are brand new to Flexbooks, or maybe those of you that have used them but never really customized for your specific curriculum, this is a great place to get started. So specifically during this webinar, we'll be covering the following topics. Why choose a CK12 Flexbook? What features make CK12 unique? And why customizable and shareable content is so important in the teaching profession? We'll talk about finding a Flexbook and CK12 content. So navigating to find concepts, original Flexbooks, concept collection Flexbooks, and user-generated content. Customizing a Flexbook including the basics, editing, deleting, reordering, adding, uploading content, and best practices for working collaboratively with our books. And then publishing and sharing your Flexbooks. How to get your books in the hands of colleagues and students through a unique URL, schools page, share plane, and offline reader. By the end of this session, we hope that you guys are gonna be able to do the following things. Find a Flexbook to customize, start one from scratch, um, add chapters and sections, reorder them, delete them, make basic edits, um, publish and share a Flexbook, understand best practices, have ideas for how to use with students. These are all things we're covering today in this session. 
Now, for those of you who choose to take an advanced Flexbook editing session, um, which I think are offered, our second one is offered next week, um, here are the types of things we're gonna cover in that session. We're gonna talk about uploading, editing, and attributing images. We'll talk about our licensing even more, um, embedding videos, multimedia, and even practice using our math editor, um, and then kind of other fun formatting, so headers, subheaders, page breaks, and linking to our interactives. Um, so if you want help with the ease topics right now, please be aware that this session is focusing on Flexbooks 101. So we're going to prioritize questions related to the basics during this webinar. We will still stay on and answer any questions that you might have um, or try to answer them via text throughout the webinar. Um, but we encourage you to join us for that advanced editing session or sign up for office hours as well. All right, so for those of you who are thinking about Flexbooks, why choose a Flexbook? What makes us different from other content providers or platforms? Um, well, quite a bit here. Um, you have a choice when choosing how to deliver content for your students. And you could use a traditional textbook, um, one of those that costs a fortune, weighs 10 pounds, is outdated from the minute it's on your shelves and one that never follows the sequence of how you teach um, your subject. But many of you are here today because you've already decided that that model is outdated and just too costly as more and more schools become budget conscious. So then you're faced with another choice of how to replace those textbooks and still have a quality curriculum to give your students. Some teachers are using Google Docs as the solution but as so many of you know, this isn't always the best replacement for a book. Um, it's a lot of things in a lot of different places and students and parents sometimes feel like they're missing out on having that single source of content. So this is where CK12 Flexbooks can really change everything for you. Um, I was recently in Liberty, Missouri. We're there at the start of this process. So they have these incredible teachers who have worked in PLCs to compile their own content. Uh, content that they've created and curated from other open sources and they've put it in a sequence that works for their school. So they've done everything right. They've, they've customized for their needs and their students, but now they're stuck because they've got it all in like folders, but they don't know the best way to deliver this content to their students. So that's where CK12's Flexbook comes in as the best way to get quality customized content in the hands of students. So one major advantage to CK12's customizable content in interactive books is that they can be accessed anywhere, anytime, and on any device. You have the power to read the entire collection of CK12 Flexbooks on any personal device, and you can download the textbooks either as a whole book or a chapter to read offline with our app, um, as well as our new offline reader. So our friends in Liberty are gonna compile all their content in a Flexbook, and all the students are gonna have access to it on their devices through a URL. So that's an example kind of, of a use case there. Um, but since we wanted to make sure that students could access it even in areas where internet isn't as readily accessible, as I just mentioned, we have our new Chrome offline reader. So you can do that extension there and you can make the content available even without consistent activity and even beyond personal devices. So be sure to go to the app or Google Play stores and download the app or click on the offline reader link on any Flexbook page. And remember, all of our resources are free at CK12. You won't be asked for a credit card or hit a paywall. We're a nonprofit trying to make education accessible and we're proud to be a cost-free solution for you. While we don't charge for our content, you can still rest assured that our Flexbooks are the highest quality. To write our flexbooks, we follow a model much like those of the traditional publishers. Our content's been developed by hundreds of people, PhDs, professors, teachers, authors, NASA scientists, and other subject matter and domain experts over the past 10 years. You can see a list of our authors if you go to um, CK12 and then click in the footer on the Meet the Teams page. You can see a list of um, all the authors who helped with these books. So um, while we are like traditional publishers and the creation of our content, the benefits of using a Flexbook is the ability to customize with interactive modalities, with videos, with resources you curate from other sources, all bringing this content to life. 
Another thing you can't do with a textbook is translate it into another language. Well, you can with CK12 Flexbooks. We have some Spanish editions of Flexbooks built on our site, but with the Google Translate option at the bottom of the screen, you have the ability to change any of our content into almost any language. Um, one of the concerns I sometimes hear as people think about going to a digital textbook is that students lose out on writing in the margins or highlighting in the book. Our flexbooks allow students to use highlighters right on their screen and take any notes that will be available on their accounts. So I think now is a good time to show you a couple minutes of video footage highlighting some of our flexbook users in Utah, Texas, Tennessee, and Idaho. You'll also get a glimpse of our executive director and co-founder, Miru Kosla, who started CK12 back in 2007 to radically change the old textbook model. I love learning, and I actually really love books. But the problem with textbooks is that they are actually very limiting format, and not every child can learn from that. Textbooks are created to be average, so you cover almost every kind of student. The problem is that that doesn't work for every student. That's why we created Flexbooks. These are textbooks that are current, customizable, and of course, free. We would be flat as teachers if we weren't always asking ourselves, what's in the student's best interest? What's going to be down the tunnel for them? Um, down the tunnel for them is less and less printed textbooks and more and more digital resources. And I'm not preparing them for their futures if I'm not learning how to use those resources as well. CK-12 was an obvious choice for us. We were able to experience some cost savings with it. The content is rich, it's engaging to students, and it's flexible. So it allows us to really tailor the tools to meet the needs of the instruction. We can embed multimedia components to make it more engaging for our students, to make it more relevant for our students, um, so that they're no longer using a static textbook, but one that's dynamic and rigorous and high quality and easily updated. Teachers can go and find a textbook that meets their needs, and they can constantly revise and edit as they go along. The CK-12 actually meets and exceeds the, the standards that are required by our curriculum, our state and district curriculum. I didn't realize that something as simple as online textbooks could change the way that I teach that much, but it's been pretty much a door that has opened that I can't close anymore. If I were speaking to someone that was considering the CK-12, I would say don't hesitate because of just the savings and just the practicality of it, but the current information and the ease of use with our students who are engaged with technology, there's just nothing else out there like it. So hopefully that was a great introduction and a chance to kind of hear from some of our users. I wanna just address a couple of questions before we continue. One asked about the offline reader. Um, you can download content into that offline reader or the apps either by whole Flexbooks or by ch individual chapters within that Flexbook. Um, so you kind of, even if you were in a section and you clicked the offline reader, it would give you the option to download the whole book or the chapter that it's in. Um, and then the other question that comes up, and we'll talk more about kind of editing together, but I'm just going to address this right now. Um, there was a question about sharing it with others and editing simultaneously. Um, our system is not built like Google Drive in that regard. Um, you would need to kind of edit at different times and you need to log in and log out of the same account um, to kind of keep everything in one place and update it all cleanly there. Um, but you don't wanna both be working on the same book at the same time because you'd end up saving revisions over each other. Um, so just make sure that you're kind of working as you go from there. All right, so keep asking your questions um, in the Q&A as you guys have them. Um, I'm gonna keep going here while we uh, move on to the next section. So um, before we start navigating the site and diving into all the ways you can customize a book, I wanna show you just how easy it can be to take one of our Flexbooks and get it in the hands of the students right away. Okay, so ck12.org. 
you can browse by our different branches, our different subjects, and choose a flexbook. To give you an idea, um, our specialty is really with the middle school and high school math and science. So here's a sampling of what we have to offer in science at middle school. We've got earth science, life science, physical science, even some biology concepts and math, um, you know, grade six, seven, and eight. And then in high school, you'll see science moves on to biology concepts, chemistry concepts, physics, earth sciences, and then math from algebra, geometry, trigonometry, pre-calc, and calculus. Um, for all of you non-math and science people out there, um, I hear you. I'm a former English teacher. Uh, CK12 specializes in these resources, but as we're going to show you here in a little bit, there's lots of user-contributed, really high-quality content that is in some of the other subject areas, social studies, language arts, some AP books. So um, we will show you where you can find additional books that aren't necessarily CK12 um, branded books here. So um, I picked the Common Sense Composition book. Like I said, I'm a former English teacher. It was under the writing section. And I can take this book, open it up, and then you guys see this customize button on the side. When I click customize, it is gonna ask me to give this book a name so I can save it. So I, I got really crafty here and I called it Lindsay's Common Sense Composition Book. And then now I'm able to save that book to my library and that's, that's my book. Um, so from there, you could start making lots of edits that we're gonna show you how to do today, but you can also just take the URL that was created. You can see it at the top here. The end of it's my composition book. R1, like Katie referenced earlier, is we do keep track of revisions. This is my first revision. This is a URL that I could copy and paste on a learning management system and an email. Um, I can get it in the hands of my students and my parents right away. And now I have this digital flex book. So it doesn't have to be difficult. You go through those steps in like five minutes and have the start of a book thanks to CK12. So as Lindsay just said, it can be that easy, um, but you have to know kind of where to start. Um, so when thinking about content and looking through stuff, I usually ask teachers that I'm working with kind of what their goal is or kind of how broad a scope they're looking for. Um, so let me share my screen and we're going to go over to our homepage and start talking about what this looks like in terms of finding content. So the first thing that a teacher might want to do is find a particular resource right off the bat. So maybe they're teaching a topic on heat and temperature tomorrow. And probably the simplest way to find that content might just be to type in heat and temperature into our search bar. And that's going to bring up the um, kind of search results within our system. You can filter by grade level here. You could filter by subject. And then types of modalities, and today's focus is on flexbooks, so kind of those reads and those textbooks are the big pieces, but some of our other modalities, such as interactives, our assessments, our videos, all options if you are looking for other resources. Um, and then from there, you could simply go into that particular topic, and you could pull any resource you want. You'll see our feature content here, you'll see kind of core content, I can pick grade levels. And both within that search as well as on a concept page, you'll see a community contributed tab. And that will bring up anything that other users have adjusted, they've recustomized, they've republished. If I go back a couple pages and we look at kind of the community contributed tab from search, you'll see the same thing. You'll see a number of different reads or study aids. Um, they don't kind of build the whole concept, but they, any of the resources that they have customized will be available there. Um, so similarly, if you were looking for English and you say, well, CK12 doesn't really have any literature content, I could search that and there's a couple basics that we have, but then you'll also see you know, hundreds of resources for literature under community contributed. Um, and so you, we curate and update and take care of all the CK12 content and then you're welcome to kind of explore other resources and see if they're at the same standard that you'd like to use within your class and they maybe have a great resource for you to work with. Um, but so that's kind of an option for there. If you're looking for particular topics or a particular type of resource that's not a flexbook, I'm just gonna pause kind of sidestep for a second 
And on our home pages, you can browse our, let's say, simulations as well, or you could search within that for the same thing. So if I searched for heat and temperature, just try heat. And then this one kind of might be a great resource that I think was on that same heat and temperature page. So you could search within one of our types of modality browse options. So in this case, the simulations or our interactive clicks or our adaptive practice. Um, so those are kind of all options if you're looking for a specific, just one topic resource for tomorrow or for next week or for kind of whatever you're looking for at that time. The second type of thing that you might be looking for is trying to create kind of a unit where you're talking about multiple resources together. So here, if you scroll down and you can find these kind of under your subjects, these are the ones I've starred, um, but I can also see all of the subjects that CK12 offers. Um, and let's say I picked measurement. So in here, you'll see our choices for concepts. So we took the larger topics and we broke them into bite-sized chunks or what we call concepts. And in here, you could say, okay, I wanna build a set of resources and create a unit. So maybe we wanna talk about metric units. So I could go into any one of these resources. I could see my featured content. I could check different levels. Maybe I need a basic read to help a student out that's struggling. And I could pull any of these resources and use that information as I worked with stuff. So that would be a way to kind of find our core content within anything and build a unit out within this piece. Um, and you could do the same thing with some of that user-created content if you're looking at concepts within that area. So, that's an option for kind of building concepts together. And then if you said, okay, well, I want to actually build a whole book. So you can see the books for measurement here under the Flexbooks tab. You'll see measurement shows up in our middle school math books, so that makes sense. If I went to the browse options, either from my homepage or by clicking on this browse link up here, you could then say, okay, well, let's pick a new topic. Let's pick algebra, for example. Once again, here are all of my concepts, and they'll take me to my concept pages. And then I could go to my Flexbooks tab. And algebra is a great example because it spans middle school and high school. So you'll see here resources for middle school, resources for high school. Um, I can sort by languages. So, or I could just kind of scroll down. Any of our concept books that have been translated to Spanish, you'll find down there as well. Um, so that might be helpful for you. And I could search for levels. Um, so anything that's basic at grade or because it's high school, we might also have some honors or advanced topics there. And that would help me understand and kind of pick the book that I wanted to work off of. Now, while we're looking at a Flexbook page, I wanna go through something pretty specific. And this has to do with CK12. So here you'll see an Algebra 1 Concepts book up in the top right, and an Algebra 1 Second Edition book down in the bottom left. Our Algebra 1 Second Edition book is the second edition of our original Algebra book. And that book was, looks kind of like a traditional textbook where you have a chapter, you have sections, you have multiple concepts or topics within any section. Uh, when I taught high school math, I taught you know, multiple topics for, let's say, something on functions where we we're talking about all the different vocabulary that related to it. And it was one section in my book, but it took me a week and a half to cover it because each topic in there was really its own concept. And so what we did to get from Algebra 1 to the concepts book is we broke all those down into our concepts, and that allowed us to kind of create a, maybe more sections within any one chapter, but it's still covering, for the most part, the same content that you're looking at, kind of from the original book to the concepts book. Now these concepts books are correlated one-to-one -one with all of those other resources that practice, the interactives, um, and so if you're looking for kind of that, crossover and ease where I want them to read this section and then do this homework, then that might be something you'd want to start with as you're going from there. Um, and one note kind of as you're thinking about this, I could pick, let's say I wanted this whole thing, I could pull this entire book into a flex book or I could just go in and I could pick a chapter with here in here and add it to a flex book. So it, sometimes it's easier to start with a larger flex book and kind of break it down um, so that's just something to keep in mind. And then if I went back to my homepage and I wanted to look at books that other users have created, if I wasn't searching, I could do that through the schools icon. And that allows you to see books that users have created and republished as a school. 
And so, for example, let's say we have a district down in Texas that does a ton of work with us. Um, and they have not only customized math and science content. So you'll see here down in El Paso, there's some chemistry content. They probably took some of our stuff from. But they also have topics like English here or government here. And those are resources that they've actually built from scratch or that they've gotten permission to use content for within our license. Um, and those are resources that they've then published and given back to the community that you guys can take and customize and have as a starting place. So, so far we've covered kind of finding an individual topic, pulling a couple different sections for a unit, looking at flex books, whether they're CK 12 books or school created books. And the last way that a lot of teachers kind of ask for content is based on standards. So we have two options to find content based on standards. One is to find a standards aligned flexbook. So let's say I need a common core standards for calculus for a 11th grade classroom. So it would bring up any book that had a calc based common core standard that was also tagged to 11th grade in kind of any part within there. And I could either pick the whole book or I could pick the sections that were appropriate. Um, and that's one way to kind of browse for books that are aligned to standards. And if you click on the link, it will tell you all of the standards and how they match kind of within any chapter. So you could then see those exact standards in that process. Similarly, if I was on the home page and I clicked on my standards browser, this is both for Common Core Math and Next Generation Science. And these browsers allow you to actually pick a topic and you'll see the standards here and then the related concepts that CK12 has. So if I was doing this particular NGSS standard, I could click on seasons, it would take me to that page, I'd see all the resources for that topic, and that would allow me to kind of go back through and use those resources to address this particular standard here. Um, so that, just one note, if you're not seeing, if you're on the home page and you're not seeing the standards option here or here, it might be that you're in a student account, so you wanna make sure that you set your teacher account um, within your settings up under your name. Um, to actually be a teacher, and then you'll see this on your homepage and you'll be able to access that. That's probably one of the biggest differences between teacher and student is that homepage navigation, as well as our new practice widget within student accounts for our concepts books. Somebody was just um, asking, again, how did you find the schools page? So if you wanna scroll up, um, perhaps, on the teacher's page, they get the school's icon in the middle. Um, if you're logged in as a student, it's gonna say study guide there because um, we think that they're a little more interested in what's going on with the study guide. So that's your easiest way to find some schools. You can also, I just switched um, kind of the rest of the site. You can't easily switch back and forth in the same way because if you're doing assignments, you wanna be logged in as a student. But for that home page, you can see the study guides here. Um, and then the school's icon, students can still access it. So if you have, want them to kind of go to your school and pull up all your resources, they can still do that from their homepage. So that's an option as well. All right, Katie, um, we have a question about the differences between your secondary flexbooks and your new elementary level flexbooks. Um, just generally, do you wanna talk about some of the differences and similarities? Sure. So. If you look here, I mean, our core content, as we said, is middle school, high school, math and science. Um, so our kind of anything from arithmetic, measurement, algebra are all mixed into our um, middle school, sixth, seventh, eighth grade math books. Um, you'll see elementary resources for life science, not sorry, middle school resources for life science and physical science. Um, Earth science spans both topics for middle school and high school. So you'll see Earth science concepts for high school and earth science concepts for middle school. Um, so that's kind of the middle school, high school question. If you look back at our topics, um, for elementary, we actually don't have um, elementary math books that we have created at this point in time. Um, you'll see options for any one of these topics. Um, let's say I went into grade four time. You'll see kind of practice videos and the occasional flicks that's floating through the elementary content, but um, the only real math that covers elementary that we have is a pre-algebra explorations book that you'll see in here. Um, so under algebra, we have a pre-K through seventh grade explorations book um, that was 
kind of compiled together at that point in time, but most of our core content is middle school, high school. For science, we did just launch our science books for elementary. So let's go back to that browse and pull up grades K-5 science. Um, and these books are a little bit, there's, there's less content in any section. We don't currently have other resources attached to them. Um, so I would definitely recommend if you're in the elementary level, not only looking at what we have, but really exploring user content through search or through the school's options to see what other resources are available. So we're getting a lot of um, great questions in Q&A. Some are very uh, specific to a user, and so I think Star's answering a lot of those questions by text. Um, Katie, I want to ask you a couple kind of broader philosophical type questions here about um, one user is asking, if I'm just starting out with Flexbooks, would you suggest creating a Flexbook per unit instead of one to cover an entire year? What are your thoughts on that? So, I would, I mean, I think it depends on if you're looking to start, what I might do is, let's say I was teaching kind of trigonometry, for example. So if I went into trig, um, I went into one of these flex books, I could pull up my trig concepts book, um, and I could do a couple of different things. I could customize this whole book and then um, just have students look at the initial chapters and say I've been updating it, but they still have kind of the reference as the whole book. Or I could take any one of these chapters and I could simply add this to a flexbook and I could just create a new flexbook. Um, so if I add any resource to a flexbook textbook, um, once it'll load my actual textbooks in there, let's try that one more time. Um, I think I have so many books going in this demo account now that it's trying to load a ton of them as we go. But I could add it to a flexbook or I could create a new one right here with this create a new flexbook textbook option. Um, and you could pull in chapter by chapter as you worked on them and had them ready for your students. Um, so it's really a personal preference. I know teachers that have done it either way. Um, many just start with kind of here's your thing and then as they work their way through, they continually update their content um, and then the students are just seeing the newest version, which is really the advantage of having a digital book and not a static, I have to print this out and give it to them immediately and it's fixed for the whole year. Um, one more quick question. Um, if you want to use one Flexbooks for, Flexbook for a class with students at multiple levels, would it make sense to include similar resources at different levels and have students select the one that works best for them? Um, I think this user is probably needing to hear a little bit more about our groups. Sure. So I think that kind of within groups, um, and this is our groups feature, and if you missed our Groups in Practice 101 this morning, definitely check out that recording. Um, but you can create different classes for different kind of grouping levels if you wanted to assign different resources to them. Um, if you wanted to put them all in the same book, you're welcome to do that. You could do kind of reading A and reading B, or you know, here's your review reading. Um, and you can, you can include different resources. So as we said, kind of some of these topics include advanced options. Let's pick like a chem set of books. Um, here you'll see an intermediate version as well as a basic version. So you could totally pull resources from this basic version in as separate sections or create two different books and assign one chapter to, from one book to a set of students and a, this, a similar chapter to another one. Um, so I think probably the biggest thing that I get when people say, well, should I do it this way or this way? And I, my answer is almost always I've had teachers do both of them. Um, it just really depends on the situation and what you're looking for. Okay, we've got uh, a lot of good questions coming in. I think several of them are going to get answered in this next session, next section as we start talking a little bit more about um, how to actually make some edits to your Flexbook. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to share my screen back for a second and um, remind you that all the content you see on our site is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial License, or CC by NC. And this allows you to use, but not sell, and adapt our content. It also means that as you think about customizing content and adding in your own images, media, all of that, that you need to make sure you have the rights to use it within our platform. So, um, I think Katie's going to share her screen back here and she's going to show you how to start making some basic edits to your Flexbook. 
Thanks, Lindsay. Um, so as we said, kind of from this homepage, you can scroll down, you can pick a topic. So we just had some questions about elementary. So let's pick an example book from our new science flexbooks. Um, and let's say I wanted to pick my fourth grade science book. So right off the bat, as Lindsay showed you earlier, I can customize this. And then I could add a new title, and I'm just gonna put demo for July 12th, so I can keep track of everything in my library as I continue to demonstrate. So that's step one. I could save it right now. So if I click over here on the save option, it will save that book, it will add it to my library, and I can always find those resources if I go back to my library and go back into them. And then instead of clicking customize, because I already own this resource, I now have the option to edit it. And that's a really good reminder. If you are opening something that you think you already customized and you're seeing that customize option, that means you're not accessing your version. So you can see up at the top right here where it says created by Jumpstart Demo. That, that tells me that it's mine. This edit option tells me it's mine and I can start editing it from there. So kind of first option, rename it, good to go. I can share it. And then I can start editing it. So let's say I only wanted to cover physical science and earth science, and I wasn't gonna cover life science in this particular section. So I could remove that entire chapter if I wanted to, or I could go back in and I could remove any individual section. So let's say I wanted to delete all of this stuff on plants. I could just remove that one, click the X on the next one, and repeat this process all the way down with either sections or even the whole chapter. So let's just remove that whole chapter as I work in there. Now, before you worry about this, if next year you decide you are including that entire unit, that same add to Flexbook option I showed you earlier, I could go back in and I could add, open up this original book from CK12 and add that whole chapter back into this book. So, you're deleting it from now from this book, but, but you have the option to kind of put it back in that book later if you wanted to. I could reorder these chapters. This little up and down arrow right here is my, our reorder option. So now earth science comes first. I could put physical science back first. And I can do the same thing if I wanna do anything at the chapter level, or sorry, within a chapter, I just kind of open up that chapter with this little arrow on the left side. And then I can do the same thing, I can adjust resources within there and drag them back up again. If you want to move things between chapters, just open both chapters. And then I could put plate tectonics up here, actually put it in that chapter. Um, but since it doesn't go there, let's put it back in the earth science section. So you can drag and move stuff and reorder content that way within any chapter or any two chapters by just kind of opening both of them. I could add content using that add to Flexbook option when I'm browsing. If I do that, I wanna make sure that this is saved and I'm not in edit mode at the same time, but that is an option. You can also add content from within this book. So you can click on add content here on the left and you can upload a Word file or a Google Doc. Just know that each Word file or each Google Doc translates to a section. So a section would be any one of these like 1.1 1 .1 or 1.4, those are the sections, so upload per section. You could write a new modality, so you could actually create a new modality and open that up, and it would save this, and it would bump you into our editor, and I could write a new modality. So I could write a title and go there. I'm gonna go back, because I don't actually wanna do that at this time. Um, or I could choose to add content, and I could search CK12. So let's say I wanted more stuff on plate tectonics. and I could add that content in there. Now, I usually find it easier to browse our stuff and that way I can fully see the content that I'm adding and add it from there. So this is an option, but it may be easier to use the add to Flexbook option we showed you earlier. Um, and then the last super important piece is I could add a new chapter. So this would be a demo chapter. I could add information and introduction, summary, details, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, and I could just start with the beginning part and then 
you'll see there's no sections in here, so I'd want to add new sections in there and go from there. Um, so we had two people who just asked for clarification on what you mean by modality and what writing a modality means. Sure. So a modality, let me just open this up for a second. I'm going to open up another page so I don't mess that piece up. But modalities are different ways of learning something. So simulations is one type of modality on our site. Our Plix interactives are another. Our practice is another. If I pick any particular topic in here, so let's say chemistry, and I go into a topic on chemistry, you'll see a bunch of different modality types or different options in here, and those are the different ways to learn. Now, let's say if I was in this particular read, I could add this to my Flexbook, and I would say this one is still in edit mode, so I'm not gonna touch that one right now, but I could add it to any of the other ones, or I could go back in here, save my book, and yes, I'm aware that this topic might not be the best choice for an elementary book, but I could add this to that book in my fourth grade science book. And then if I go back into my library, open up that book, and this is where I'm gonna kind of limit the number of tabs that I have open, so I'm not gonna edit that from there. You'll now see this particular section in there. I can go in, edit it again, and I can open this chapter by toggling that down and then dragging this section into it. And you'll see it kind of added that section within that particular chapter. So now I have three chapters. The first two have a ton of content in them. And then the third one just has that single section in there. Um, so those are kind of all options for adding basic content. So one of our users said, um, is asking for clarification. So the only way to add a new section is to upload a Word doc or Google file. How can I make a new section? I know how to do a chapter, but not a section. So if you wanted to add a new section, the way I just did that already exists on CK12, then I would probably, your cleanest option is to save this particular book, Go browse around CK12 and just like I did with the atomic model one, click that add to Flexbook option. So if you're doing that cleanly from another section, that's an option. I could choose to go into my library. I'm just gonna save that so it's not there. I could choose to go into my library and create a brand new read, which would be under the modality option here. So modality here, create a read, Demo read, June 12th. And then I could edit all this content and go from there. And once I start typing in information, I can save this. We'll talk about drafts and finalizing in a second. But once this content is there, I can now add this to my Flexbook. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in here. And if I go back to my library and I go back to that book, you should now see this newest read that I just made at the bottom. And I could edit it and do the same thing. I could drag it into that demo chapter or another chapter. The other option, if you wanted to directly add it already, in this add content, I could write a new modality or write a new read right here. So demo read from within my textbook. I could put general information here. And when I save that, you'll now see that here. And just a note about the draft versus finalized comment, as you see there. Um, so in this particular case, anything that I save in draft mode is something that I'm working on that I don't want others to see yet. Um, and as soon as I wanna finalize it, that's when other users that have a link to this book or that we're shared this book in a group, um, or if I publish the book, they can see those updates. Um, I can, even if I finalize this book or any section, I can go back in and edit it again. Finalize just means it's ready for viewing and others can see it at that time. So now that we've talked about some of the basics of editing the structure of the book, um, why don't we go into editing the actual content? 
So as you can see here, I could do that demo read, but let's pick one that already exists just so that we have maybe a section either in earth science or physical science. We could work off of this. Um, it's just opening that other section. And I can edit any read by just clicking on this little pencil icon. So um, if you want to see that one more time, let's go back for a second. I'm in the edit version of this book. I'm opening that particular chapter. And then I'm choosing my pencil icon right here. And that will get me into the edit option for this book. Demo for July, isn't it? Um, so we can save that. And this will take us into our editor. From here, I can make basic edits. So I can say, mm, we're going to cut this content, and I'm going to eliminate this learning objective. So I can just delete content pretty easily. Um, this looks like it's in bullet points. So actually, let's take it out of there. And I can change the sizing by picking, OK, I want this to be a, actually a header section from here. Um, so I can do simple edits there. You can see images here. Um, you have the ability to edit or insert images there. If I'm in regular text, this media option gives you stuff there. And then this X kind of in brackets is our math editor. All of that content will cover in depth in our advanced editing section. So definitely join us for that next week if you're interested in those pieces. Um, but you can really make kind of your basic standard edits that you would in any book. I just highlighted that and turned it bold. Um, you can add a table. So all sorts of options. It's pretty intuitive if you're used to working with Google Docs or um, Word. And you can kind of see some of the content that's in here um, and work your way through that piece. So that's the option for editing. I would say if you're brand new to this, try some out. Try clicking Customize. Try editing a section. Um, come back next week with lots of questions for the advanced editing piece, um, but we can see that part. But regardless of what I do, um, I want to make sure that anything that I want users to see, I'm going to click that finalize option so they can now see that piece. And then it's going to kind of save that and update my book. And the last piece of this is, okay, regardless of whether or not I've just renamed it or I started making edits, I want to start sharing it to my users or my students. So you have a number of options for that. On the left-hand side, you can see this Share to Groups option. And if you've set up a class group, you can share any resources to that group by just clicking on Share to Groups. And it will pop up the group options that you have here. So you'll see kind of different options for groups that I've created. And I can share any of those as I work my way through. Or I could create a new group and then go back and share this kind of to that group after I've created it. As Lindsay said, you'll see this user has kind of a unique, crazy user ID number in the top. But I could just share that URL elsewhere. Um, you may want to kind of pull it up cleanly from your library so it doesn't have a bunch of revision numbers in it um, and share it that way. Or just kind of take that part out. But those are all options. So you can share via a URL, share to groups. You could publish your book if um, you wanted others to be able to search for it in our search bar, um, or you wanted to be able to put it on your school's page. Um, and then this right green share me option, and I'm going to show you that one more time because this gets lost all the time. So in the bottom right, kind of floating down there, you'll see this green, what we call a share plane. And that green pop up shows you the options to email this resource to someone else to share it on social media. And that's actually how it's linked to Google Classroom. So you can share a resource directly to your Google Classroom account by clicking on the Google Classroom icon there. So those are all options. And once again, we brought up this offline reader a bunch. So I could actually, for any customized content, you're going to want to open it in a browser. And then I can click the offline reader, and I can open this in reader. And I'll just show you what that looks like for a second. So you can see kind of, I could download the full book. Or I could download any of these chapters. And right now, these sections are outside a chapter, so they're reading at the chapter level. Um, so that's why I'm allowed to download them. But I can't download all the sections within that piece. Um, so 
I think that's kind of the super, super basic. As we said, we wanted to just show you kind of the pieces that we're working with here. I'm gonna start answering some of these questions as we go through. Yeah, we, we had some feedback that, you know, that was a, a quick demonstration. And obviously, um, we have a lot of you on here who are looking to just grab a book and go. And then some of you who are really going to be power users and making tons of edits and uploading from scratch. And so we've kind of aimed for the middle ground here just to show you some of the basics. Um, Katie, why don't you show them how they can get to our help desk? Because you guys who are, who are asking, you know, of, if you're going to need additional steps and help in building your books, um, certainly you can go back and rewatch any of these webinars and attend, you know, our advanced flexbook editing um, webinar. But we also have these help and support tabs, and you can click on those. And um, we have some links on our certified 2017 page that should help you as you're coming across um, different things that you want to do within your flexbooks. You're going to find some tips here on. Um, Flexbook textbook and modality customization, um, you know, how to add concepts. So I just I want to encourage you that um, we do already have some tools built in that once you guys start using it, you should be able to to search and feel empowered that um, that you're going to you're going to find a way to to edit this flexbook. Um, kick it over for some questions. So um, we definitely have kind of if you didn't catch that, on any of our pages up in this top part, that help option took us to that help desk. Um, and then I was able to go in and pick a topic. It kind of brings you to this page to start, which is your help center. And you can say I'm a student or a teacher or parent, and then kind of explore resources here. So definitely check that out. Um, we also were showing you kind of on our jumpstart or sorry on our certified educator program so in the footer i can always get to that page and this is our session on flexbooks 101 and as we noted we put some useful links kind of from our help center that we thought might be the most likely ones for kind of this level of introductory edits so how to customize the overview and that link that we just put on the flexbook textbook part and then kind of if you look at the difference once again between that and the advanced flexbook one, which we're covering, this includes all of those funky parts on video and math editor and stuff like that. And those, in order to not go into them in total depth and make this a four hour presentation, we split this into kind of this quick basic overview and then all of those added details ever. But we can definitely, you know, check those out to start and join us next week for that one. So it looks like, um, we have a question on share, the share a plane. Is that how you would share the whole textbook or just certain chapters? You can actually use the share a plane on any level of our content. So um, if I go into here and I am looking at physical science as a whole, you'll see the share a plane here and I can share that resource, this entire page of resources and everything that goes in it from there. I could go into a book and share it at the book level. You'll see it again. And at this point in time, once you get into a book or a chapter or read, you start seeing the other options to share to groups. Um, if I went into the chapter level, you'd see the same thing. I can share to a group. I can share it to there. Um, and then when, once I go into an actual section, in addition to the share to groups option and the share a plan option, I can actually assign this read to my class. So if you have a CK12 group, um, you can assign that read and then it will register whether or not they actually accessed and read that read or whether or not they haven't even bothered to open it at that time. Um, so that's something that might be useful as you work your way through that particular book. Um, in terms of a student accessing a Flexbook, the same deal. This, this browser option, CK12 Browse, this is the same browse options that you get, that they get. Um, so they, would, they could access it that way. If it was a book that you created, then you might want to share the direct URL to that um, or share it within a group. Um, and so that's a case where you'd want to kind of see it, how to build a group and all those pieces within that webinar that we covered there. We had several questions asking about um, standards and um, you, you showed it and so I don't feel like you need to go in depth, but maybe just generally again, um, what kind of standards alignment they're going to find on, on our website. 
Sure. So this is one way to find standards aligned textbooks. Um, you can kind of see our common core standards or particular states if you're looking at different options. You can see which ones were aligned when they were made to those state standards. Um, and then if you were looking for a particular standard and not kind of general alignment, then our browsers up here, our standards browsers, would be for common core and next generation science standards. Um, so those are kind of, those were done when those came out. And one thing to note, there are 50 states and they routinely update their standards. Um, and so as states continually update their standards, that's something that, you know, we allow for customization. So you may need to tweak it and say, oh, this was aligned then, we've now updated the following standards, so I just need to adjust these few reads. Um, but that's something that we really encourage you guys to do kind of on your own. And it's also something that, where this schools icon right here might be super useful in that if you're from a particular school, um, so I know like Texas has the Texas Teaks and those are their state standards, it may be worth seeing what other schools have done already because they probably have the most closely aligned newest alignment that you're working with um, as a great place to kind of say, okay, well, they've done that extra work for me, they've dealt with that extra piece of customization, and now I can start using those pieces there. Okay, still some questions to answer. Um, some about labs and additional supplemental materials, um, but we're gonna sit on those for just a minute, sorry, we will get back to those, but as we're approaching the hour mark, um, I do wanna make sure that um, I review the assignment with everybody and a little bit of wrap up information. And then as always, we stay on and answer all of your questions that you guys have. Um, but here is uh, the assignment for this session. So you guys know if you are on a pathway to CK12 certification that we ask you to complete the assignment after each webinar that you've attended. The link for today's assignment is at the top there, and we're gonna put it in the chat window, and that's www.tinyurl.com slash CEP17FB101. That link is in the chat window. You will find it on our Certified Educator page, um, and then you will receive an email tomorrow. Um, emails go out about 24 hours later, um, next day that has the assignment in it. Um, this webinar has been recorded and it will be on our, um, our archive section on this page. So this is the certified 2017 page in the footer of ck12.org or you just go to certified 2017. And here's where you find all those articles that Katie was showing you earlier, your assignment for any, any session, and then the archived video section at the bottom of this page. So, um, not mandatory, different from your assignment. We do have a general feedback form for every session that you attend this summer. If you would like to give us some feedback on the session, um, you can go to the tinyurl.com, CEP 2017 feedback. Um, we've been reading all of those comments, um, the, the good, the, the suggestions, the improvements. We're, we're trying to um, continue to uh, make our program better for our users. So give us any feedback that you guys might have. Um, and then, of course, as you're working on your Flexbooks, when you have questions, you can email support at ck12.org, and we are here to help you and support you as you're working on this. Um, you can also find us on social media if you're um, a Twitter person, Facebook. Uh, make sure to, to follow us at CK12 Foundation or hashtag CK12 Foundation. So at this point, um, those of you who need to sign off of this webinar, goodbye. We'll see you in a future one. Um, all of you who have open questions or want to hear the rest of the Q&A, um, please stay on because we're going to continue to go through a lot of good information here. So we had a couple questions in terms of difference between levels of content. So for example, life science and middle school. So let me share that screen again. Um, so at the highest level, kind of if you're looking to understand the difference between certain areas, you'll see our life science is really geared towards middle school. So this is specific to here. You'll see kind of an introduction, molecular biology and genetics, cell biology, ecology, and you kind of work your way down. So it's, it's sort of that introduction piece. And I would just recommend kind of skimming the topics that are included there. If I went back up to the top and I went back to science and I clicked on the biology one, you'll see a lot more content and kind of in-depth that you would expect to see in biology. Um, so all of a sudden you start seeing, scroll down here, evolution, 
prokaryotes, viruses, protists, fungi. So there's kind of more of that content there. Um, so I would, I would just kind of explore the concepts there and see what that looks like. And then if you have other particular questions, you can email us and we can put you in touch with our science team and they can walk you through like all of the nitty gritty little differences that they know of. Um, but hopefully that gave you kind of a brief overview. We had a couple questions um, that came in about the textbooks and the tabs in the textbooks. So let's pick a book here. Um, and you'll see kind of three tabs at the book level. So one is a read, another is a resources tab, and another is a details tab. At the table of contents at read tab, um, you'll, you'll usually see the answers for a lot of stuff in there. So that's a resource that might be super useful for you guys to work off of. Um, so definitely check that out. And then the details tab is where you're gonna put all of the information. So maybe a description, the authors, any tags, grade levels, correlations, all of those pieces that you wanna kind of put with that book. Um, and you would see the same thing if I go back here to the kind of the read is your general content tab. So if I picked a chapter, I would see the same two tabs. So here's my chapter tab. Um, some of the times you'll see the chapter level answer keys there as well. Details for sure, who are the authors, kind of what's the general description. And then if I went into a section as well, there's one extra tab for the concepts level for sections. So your resources are the same. If there were any updated resources, in this case, there's some extra resources, kind of links, other pieces that were put here. Um, details tab has your learning objectives at this level, the authors. Um, and then if it's a concept and it's correlated to our practice, you'll see a practice tab, which has kind of a preview as a teacher or a student would see this as a widget on the right side. Um, so kind of all different options for information, but your read is your core reading content. And then the other tabs are exactly what you would kind of expect. Update, like uploaded resources and then the details that tell you the information about that book. What are your suggestions for users who are looking for labs, procedures, data tables, et cetera? Um, you know, do we have any of those ready to go um, to be put in Flexbooks? So um, I don't know of any right off the bat, um, and I can check with our science team. So um, there are workbooks, but those are more often questions with that, um, not necessarily full labs. Um, you can search and see. That would probably be your best option. Is search for labs and see what users might have created and uploaded to our system. Um, and once again, if it's kind of, that's more of a science specific question. And unfortunately, um, I spend more time with our math content because I have a background in mathematics, um, but I can definitely find out the answer for you for that. So um, my, my gut instinct is to start by searching for that piece um, because I don't know of any right off the top of my head. Um, like in kind of a broad format, I think I've seen some scattered throughout resources. Um, but then I can, if you email Jumpstart or you email support, we can put you in touch with our science team and they can point you towards any other specific resources, maybe even that users have created that would address that issue. So Vicki was asking um, about writing and adding modalities, which hopefully we answered that. Um, if we didn't, maybe ask that again. Um, but then the second question was, when we publish our own book, can we hide the answers, the resources tab from the students? You, you can't hide the tab, but you can actually just delete the resources from there. Um, so if I went into my library, um, and let's see, I don't know that there's any in that one. Um, but I, um, so sometimes you can kind of go through that piece and see if you're having trouble with that or it's not actually letting you do that at this time, definitely let us know. Um, but I'm looking at Flexbook textbooks. Um, it should actually be reloading this with just those Flexbooks. Um, but if you upload resources, you can kind of delete them out of there. Um, so I would say you could do that. If it's related to the original book, they could find them in the original book. Um, usually, just kind of to give you a background in our philosophy, because we have students learning both within classes and outside of classes, we really try to make our resources available for learning. Um, and so that's where that, that practice link um, would be kind of your best option in terms of saying, okay, I want students to be able to see, um, like try something and make sure that they have something that hits their needs and they can't see those resources beforehand. 
Um, so that would be where our adaptive practice system might be a great resource for them. Okay, we had a question of, are the Plix connected to the Flexbook page? And um, what we're suggesting right now for users who want to put Plix with the Flexbooks, um, they don't have a, an embed code like the videos that you embed into a book might. Um, but we do have a lot of users who are adding maybe like a header that says, check out this Plix, check out this interactive, and then copying and pasting the URL of that Plix into the Flexbook. That's kind of what we're doing right now with our Plix, although um, we do have kind of a beta version of a, an interactive geometry book that's about to have um, Plix-like interactives embedded within the text. So we are hoping to do more of that um, as we go along. One other thing to note, so um, this is a section, if you look at it up here, you can kind of see the description. If you look, it says home, um, mathematics, algebra, flexbook, CK12 Algebra 1 Concepts, Chapter 1, Section 3. So that, that, that was the really quick kind of navigation I did just to get you to a section. But any of our sections that you're accessing within a concepts book that have associated resources, um, will, if you scroll all the way down to the end, past the review, past the vocab, you, you'll see something that says you may also like. And here there's a video, there's a preview of our practice. If it was a student, they'd have the option to practice. Um, and in this case, there's a Plix available for this concept, and so they could see it there. Um, but as Lindsay said, if you wanted it directly in your text, then just hyperlink that piece from there. And let's see, it looks like we have one question. Um, if I use the concept version of the Flexbooks, will it include all of the videos Plix that I would be assigned if you clicked a concept? Um, so the deal, there's kind of a couple pieces that I want to clarify. So one, you can see here's your concepts version and here are access to these other resources right here. If I actually clicked on any of these resources, um, it would take me to that page. Oh, clicks is probably a bad example. Let's go back for a second and click on the video resource. So you'll see it takes me to that page and I have a couple different reads, probably different levels, some clicks, video, practice, and a real world application. Um, so those are available for students to use. If you want to assign them, you actually, you can see here again that assign to class option on the left. I can assign that video. So if I just want students to have access to them, definitely that concepts group will kind of link them back towards there um, and they can access those resources. If you want to see them use them, then I would need to assign each part so that I get a record of each different modality or each different type of learning I wanted them to use. Um, so hopefully I answered that question. Um, if not, please ask another follow-up from there and we'll try to answer that piece as well. Okay, so we are looking at an empty Q&A list here. So this is last call for any questions for this session. I want to thank you all so much for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you again, hopefully, as soon as tomorrow. Thank you, everyone.